Welcome to another JJ in the Field. Timely agronomic tips when you need them most. I'm Jonah Johnson. Today we're a week later and we're in part two of our two episode series of evaluating freeze damage. So if you recall in our last episode, we were in Miami County and we're back in the same wheat field. We wanted to follow up with the second edition. And if you've noticed behind me, a uh, lot's changed. You know, the wheat's grown quite a bit in the last week, um, even though we've been through quite an erratic weather uh, several events. So if you think about uh, a week ago, eight days ago actually, uh, it was you know rather brisk but not cold. It was a bright sunny day. Then temperatures dropped and uh, Ohio experienced anywhere from a dusting up to seven inches of snow. Uh, then it melted very quickly within you know 12 to 24 hours. Then it was uh, got even colder and then we had another snow cover in some regards. Um, and so the, a lot of the wild card and the questions guys have been asking is how did my crops fare through the, those cold spells? As we look behind me, you know, vegetatively the wheat looks, you know, very, very good. Uh, from the air that looks very good as well. And so the snow probably helped us to a point, but then there was a wild card of the temperature extremes after the snow melted. And so in regards to the wheat, first of all, you know, dep depend on how cold you got. And I know from my weather station at, at my home, I had 26 degrees for over three and a half hours. And so all depending on how low you are to that wheat crown down here on the ground is, you know, did we get below 28 degrees? Now, depending on your growth stage, and we mentioned that last week, evaluate where that wheat uh, was. And last week, this was probably at the fixed growth stage advanced seven. Again, most weather stations is a six foot, but again, localize air temperatures. So to scout, you'd want to look for your low lying areas in any areas that you thought um, maybe on top of a hill that got extreme winds when we had that cold spell, because that can actually make things obviously colder on those wheat plants. And so I've had a lot of pictures shared with me. So obviously you guys were able to watch our videos last week and know how to cut those plants in half and that's that's wonderful and so we dissected some plants this morning and the wheat heads that we looked at uh, were looked uh, in good shape okay so we've dug some wheat plants here we've been out in the field scouted from multiple different areas and you can see we have different plants from different topographies of the field and so what you want to do is you want to find your wheat plant find a predominant tiller if you will and you want to pull that out of the crown and then it's easiest to start to strip these leaves off typically a wheat plant has three to four leaves total if you note on this one this would be your flag leaf emerging so this wheat fields at Feex grow stage nine and we can tell that officially by this last leaf has made its oracle it's kind of like popping your collar on your shirt just like on corn, so you can see it makes that snap of that collar. And then if we take that one step further to confirm that, so we have my knife where I'm pointing right there, there's that collar. I first cut this plant and dissected it in half. And if you follow the knife blade tip, this is going up right through the middle of that plant where this is yellow, right where this is protruding. And right there is the flag leaf. And so you can see how that came out of the center of that. So that is your last leaf. That flag leaf is the one that protrudes out to the side. And that would be your biggest carbohydrate filler contributor to that filling wheat head similar to an ear leaf. So if we look now to evaluate freeze damage, we took these plants, and <clears throat> like we mentioned last time, you feel for that swollen spot and you'd slice up through that plant. And once we do that, we can see our wheat heads. If you note, those wheat heads have, they're nice and firm to the touch. I've already examined these. And you note that they're not brown and withered. They're rather plump feeling, if you will. They're not brownish water soaked um, off color right now they have this nice yellowish green color and they'll get greener as they get more mature up into that plant and so <clears throat> this wheat head resided just about there in that wheat plant and so if you're curious how your plants weathered the storm 
you just want to go out and cut plants and look at those wheat heads. And so again, if they're not healthy, they'll not look like this. They'll look water soaked, brown, small, look like something's been through the freezer. If you've ever had some vegetables that got too cold and they look withered and desiccated, that's a good indicator of some freeze damage on your wheat. Overall, I think you know wheat's a very resilient crop and I think uh, for most of us, we should be doing uh, fared the storm fairly well because if you think about last year at this time, actually the second week of May is when we had a freeze event and we had a lot of wheat fields damaged on the wheat heads because they were fully emerged and miraculously the wheat still did very, very respectable. In regards to our soybeans, anywhere we had soybeans that were uh, emerged out of the ground, that first neck with the cotyledons emerging and opening, um, of course those necks could be damaged by the cold, the cotyledons, and if we've had damage and we experienced this last year in 2020 as well, um, you want to look at those cotyledons when they open up and that meristematic growing point is between those cotyledons. So if the neck protruding of the ground got uh, frost damage, if it's constricted, um, looks water soaked <clears throat> and brown, not per se disease, but just looks not green and healthy, that could be indication of some damage. Also, um, if we talk about our corn, as I mentioned last week, I wasn't concerned, but the concern if you did have corn in the ground is obviously imbibitional chilling. So as that snow melted quickly, it was very cold water. And if you had newly planted corn seed that was awaiting uh, a rain event to germinate, and if it took up a first drink of cold water, that could have damaged um, those emerging seed. And you could see potentially corkscrewed uh, corkscrewed mesocotyls coming out of that plant, those radicals, any part of the root system could be potentially damaged. I think we fared pretty good in regards to that as well. I haven't heard too many guys uh, mentioning that, but if you had any emerged corn, um, I had very little concern about that because till that growing point's above the ground, um, it's fairly protected. We'd have to have a very cold event fall with very, very cold water that would actually kill that plant when the growing point's below the ground. I think we fared that cold event uh, fairly well. If you uh, have further questions or want to follow up with more information, feel free to follow up with your local ASA or anybody on the PCT team. I'm Jonah Johnson for JJ in the Field. Thanks for watching.